All right. Welcome, everybody, to Go in 5 Minutes, episode number 26. Uh, so today we're going to take a break from the Buffalo series, and we're going to talk about a requested topic, uh, which is about building clients in Go to consume REST APIs. Uh, so we've done quite a few episodes on building REST API servers in Go. Uh, so there was a request on GitHub to flip that and build a client. So we're going to build a command line interface or CLI, uh, and we're going to use Cobra, the Cobra package. And if you're not familiar with Cobra, um, check out the link to uh, the Cobra GitHub repository, uh, and also go back to episode number 18. Uh, and that covers a bunch of the basics around building uh, Cobra CLI. So we're going to jump from Cobra and we're going to talk about how to build an API client for the dark sky weather service. Uh, so dark sky presents you with um, kind of a non-trivial uh, JSON based REST API. Uh, so we're going to build a client. Uh, we're going to not use the dark sky sort of uh, pre-built client for you that, that they provide for you. We're actually going to build one from scratch using uh, this go request client, uh, this kind of go request REST API client. So we're going to take the go request library, which is generic across, you know, any API client, we're going to use it and we're going to build a custom client just for the dark sky API. So there's a link in the show notes to the dark sky API. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about that. Uh, we're just going to use it to refer to how we're building our code. So let's jump in. So um, we have our main.go. Uh, this is all about uh, Cobra. Uh, main.go jumps into this execute function. Again, just all about Cobra. Uh, up in our init function, we're grabbing out uh, the API key, which is a secret key specific to my dark sky application. Uh, and there's instructions on the dark sky link that I put in the show notes on how to get your own. Uh, so we're grabbing that out and failing if it doesn't exist. And then we're going down to this uh, CLI temp handler. And this is where sort of all the magic starts happening. This is what we're going to focus on here. So the main two things I want to point out are lines 11 and 23. So we have created a client that I'll show in a second. That is specific to the dark sky API, like I mentioned, and it uses go request, like I also mentioned, but most importantly, this client is used in the Cobra command, but it has nothing to do with Cobra. So it's completely separate, which is really nice because we can turn around and not only use it in our CLI, we could also use it on a server or a background task or anything else like that. So that's the first pattern I want to point out. It's really important to keep these things completely separate and that'll just pay off in the long run. So let's jump into our client. So we've got a constructor and we've got this function, uh, this method called forecast. So let's check out the constructor first. So pretty simple. Um, two great patterns are one to store that API key inside of your client struct, which is lines 10 through 13. And also create a single client, a single HTTP client that can be shared across all of the different uh, methods and all of the different calls to those methods uh, on your client. So in the Go request case, uh, Go request provides this thing called a super agent, uh, which is huge as you can see there when I uh, highlight it. Um, but all that stuff is kind of hidden from me. Uh, and really the only thing I need to know is that this is roughly equivalent to an HTTP client. So we've created our client here on line 19, we return it. And then down here, we've got actual logic that will make the get request against the dark sky API. So a common pattern here is to just uh, craft your URL. Uh, a lot of times your URL will have dynamic data in it. So you're going to want to use fumpt.sprintf to uh, craft the URL with that dynamic data. Uh, this URL format is dictated by the dark sky API. So it requires a first path parameter with the API key, the second path parameter with a latitude and longitude. And then down here, I create a shell or a zero value of my response struct. And although we'll check that out in a second, uh, that thing is basically the struct that can decode JSON into go values inside of the struct. 
And then here's the most important piece. This is how we use um, the Go request library to both make a get request and decode the response body back into this struct using a JSON decoder. So that's really important. Uh, and Go request provides this as a really convenient one-liner. Uh, whereas uh, I chose Go request because if we were to use a standard library HTTP client, uh, this would require a few different lines of making the request, checking the errors, and then after we check the errors, making sure that we can decode uh, the uh, return JSON into the struct. So here I collapse that down into one line, uh, and then I check some errors. So these first three lines here are checking to make sure that there wasn't any uh, Go error making the HTTP request or what have you. And then down below, I check to make sure Dark Sky itself actually returned uh, a valid response code. Okay. So uh, at that point, we return this thing called a response, and our CLI code can deal with the response in kind. Um, and really the CLI code is just returning a temperature inside the response. But real quick, let's check out what the response looks like. Okay, so this corresponds directly to the Dark Sky API documentation. But if you go check out that doc, you'll see that it provides, it returns a lot more stuff in the, rep in the response body. But really I only care about this. So latitude, longitude, time zone uh, is just, I want to make sure that it returns the same thing that I passed. And then it has these things called data points and data blocks for the current information, minute by minute, temperature information, hour by hour, and day by day. Okay, so then these are sort of nested JSON structures that are under the currently, minutely, hourly, and daily keys in the JSON dictionary. And these are basically the same type of struct. So they themselves have JSON struct tags in them that the Go client, uh, the Go request client library, and then under the covers, the standard library Go JSON decoder knows how to decode from bytes into these structs. Okay, so there's a data point and there's a data block. And if you yourself, you go um, sort of after this screencast and you go and check out the Dark Sky API documentation, you'll see how this all sort of maps over to the JSON that they describe they return. Okay, so the last thing here is let's go actually see this thing in action. So I'm gonna do a go build here, and then oh, uh, we're gonna output a binary called ds, and we're gonna build the current uh, directory. Okay, so we've got a ds client now, a CLI, uh, and this is the sort of the really nice Cobra um, package taking care of building sort of all the CLI logic for me. So we're going to go into the ds uh, temp command. Let me clear the screen out there. And you can see here it, it does some defaults. So basically uh, when I call temp, it automatically will call temp with a latitude of zero and a longitude of zero. And it will pass those latitude and longitude coordinates up to dark sky. And then dark sky is going to return the current temperature at the center of the earth, basically at zero comma zero. And of course I can pass in any other uh, latitude and longitude and the CLI will use that dark sky client that I built and go talk to dark sky and then return with the temperature at that coordinate in, in the world. Okay. So a couple different pieces there. Uh, we went through it kind of fast, but uh, the main things here are I would really, really, really encourage you to check out Go Requests. Uh, and you can click on the link there and it's also in the show notes. Um, and really Go Request is going to make your life a lot easier if you need to build out a custom client for uh, a third party REST API if they don't provide a Go SDK uh, or a client for your own REST API sort of internally in your own system. Okay. Um, there's also instructions, of course, on how to build this thing yourself. Um, and if you need a refresher on the Cobra library, um, there is a link at the top to episode 18, which of course I would recommend checking that out. Only five or so minutes of your time. Uh, and then also there's the Go documentation for the CLI and Cobra also provides a code generator if you want to start up, uh, sort of bootstrap your own CLI. All right, so that is it for today. I hope this really helps you get started building your own REST API client. And uh, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care, gophers.